What's up everybody? So in this video we're going to be talking about DNA profiling. So remember, I want to make this clear real quick. D1.1 is called DNA replication. Now I made for this topic, I split it into two separate videos. Okay, because these two topics were very different and I didn't want to put them into one longer video. I thought they deserved their own separate video. So make sure if you want to cover everything in D1.1, you got to watch both of these videos. Of course, if you're HL, you also have to watch the HL video, okay? Because in this one here, we cover all the nitty gritty details of DNA replication. And now we're going to be talking about DNA profile. So PCR and electrophoresis, okay? So just remember that. So let's now get into this video. So I like this topic. It's really, really interesting. And I think you'll find it interesting too. Now we're going to start off this topic with this little image here, this crime scene. Look what's happening here. We got some police, this house has been wrecked. There seems to be a person who died here and there's even a witness here going on. A lot of, this. basically it's a crime scene, right? Now, now very interesting, what do we normally do? What, what are police gonna try and find out? What, what's, the, what's the whole goal here? Well, two things, right? You can think about this. They wanna, they wanna know who the victim was, right? In this case, it's very easy. Our victim was lying here, dead, okay? Our victim is gonna be a guy called Georgie. Georgie, okay, Georgie, some random guy here, okay, Georgie, maybe he's famous, who knows, it's Georgie. Now, so that's easy, in this case, we found the victim, that was real, real simple. Now, the next question is, who is the murderer? Now, that's the hard part. Now, we're going to learn some ways in which scientists or police actually manage to figure this out. It's pretty cool. Well, normally you would think, how would you think we find this murderer? Well, maybe you'd say, look, fingerprints. Cool, yeah, you can go look at the gun. You can trace some fingerprints from that and see um, who, who that corresponds to, right? That's possible. But let's say this guy... This murderer was real, real smart. He really wiped off everything, okay? There's no evidence, no fingerprints. What else can we do? Look at this picture, okay? We, he wiped off everything, so fingerprints is a no-go. Then what can we do? There's blood, okay? Let's say this blood is not only from dead Georgia here, because obviously maybe he's been shot here, so this could be some of his blood. But let's pretend this wasn't easy. There was a fight, okay? So Georgie managed to... Get his, get his nails on this other guy, okay, and managed to, or girl, and managed to scratch the hell out of them, and they also bled. So we can say this here is blood from both Georgie and the murderer. So what do we do? How, what's the next step? That's real interesting, right? So first, what we got to do is, is figure out who the suspects are. So let's say we ask the witness here, okay, and say, who, who could have wanted to kill Georgie? Who, who the heck? So she says three guys. She, she, she knows three people who, who could have potentially wanted to kill Georgie, okay? She lists them. There's these three guys, okay? Ronaldo, because Ronaldo is his best friend. And you know, best friends even can become en enemies, okay? So Ronaldo was, is one of the suspects. Um, this guy here, Johnny Bravo, because he's the neighbor, okay? And he's really full of himself. And if anything gets in his way, he might, he might act, okay? He's a bit of a tantrum. So the neighbor, okay? And then we got this guy here, John Wick. We know if you watch John Wick, you know he's violent. And anyone who gets in John Wick's way is a dead man or a dead woman, okay? So these are the three suspects. So now the next question is, how do we figure out which one is the murderer based off just the blood? That's the cool thing. This is called DNA profiling. So DNA profiling is the process of matching an unknown sample of DNA. So let's say this sample here. We don't know who, whose blood this is. We don't know whose DNA this is. So we call this the unknown sample. So the process of matching an unknown sample of DNA um, to a known sample of DNA. So the known samples of DNA, we're going to get from these three suspects. This police is going to go to their houses and take a sample from them, a DNA sample. Okay. Um, so now then we're going to compare this unknown sample of DNA to these three known samples and see which one this unknown sample corresponds to. Because whoever it matches with, that is the most likely murderer, right? So we also call DNA profiling DNA fingerprinting, okay? So that's another name you need to remember. Okay, so let's recap that real quick. So we're going to take now this unknown sample of DNA, okay? Because so, we know some of this blood is from the murderer, not only from Georgie, okay? And then we're going to take a, a sample from each of these three guys. The police is going to go on and head over to these three guys' house and take a blood sample, okay? So that's what we got here. We got now a blood sample here from the crime scene, the unknown sample. We got blood samples from these three guys. And now we want to see which of these guys, which of their DNA matches the unknown sample at the crime scene, okay? That's really the big picture. Hopefully that makes sense so far. So now the big problem is, did, 
the DNA from the bio, yeah, this make me clear. So we're in this blood uh, splatter here, we've got some cells, right? So the cells are like red blood cells, white blood cells, right? All those things. Um, remember, so the cells have some DNA. So the DNA are going to come from these cells, okay? So I just want to make it clear where precisely the DNA is coming from, okay? Then it's not just lying there, it's in the cells they're gonna, and they're going to take it out of these cells. Okay, cool. So the thing now is normally the DNA, these, this little DNA here is not enough. Okay, I want you to think of it like this. When you have a printer and you put very little ink into it, okay, the image you get is very blurry, very, very blurry. It's the same thing here. When we have very little DNA from a crime scene, when we do all the tests and stuff to prove which, um, uh, to, to try and find the murderer, if the DNA was very little, the result's not going to be so good, not so accurate. The image will not be so clear, just like a printer with too little ink. So it's very important for us, the very first thing after we take a sample is to um, amplify or, or uh, replicate the DNA from the crime scene. We, we want to take the DNA and make more copies of it because if we have more copies, then we can do the test better. We can, we can, our results from the test will be more accurate. Okay, so we'll find the right murderer. So that, so that process of making, of amplifying the DNA, making more copies is called PCR. Okay, and we're going to look at that now. Okay, let's go into PCR. So as a recap, we have now the unknown sample and we've got the known samples. Now, first, what we want to do is replicate the DNA from the crime scene so we have more of it, okay? So we can do all these tests we want to do. Okay, so that PCR test is just called polymerase chain reaction. And we'll see as I explain why it's really called this. For access to our full-length premium videos and so much more, head over to teachme.org now.